Hello everybody and welcome back to From Rhythm to Algorithm Part 3. This one is titled Once, Twice, Thrice. <laughs> um, and in this episode we're going to be again reviewing more basics of mathematics. Last episode I said we're going to be doing tension path physics. Almost. We might jump in there a little bit, probably not. But we're just going to review some more foundations of mathematics and ask some very direct questions that everyone can appreciate uh, pretty immediately with music. Um, the first thing I want to say in this video is Mark Zuckerberg and Yuri Milner recently released their breakthrough prizes in life science, mathematics, uh, fundamental physics. The prize is fraudulent and every single um, scientist who accepted that prize that is aware of my work is not only committing fraud but is ruining my life. Yeah, ruining my life might be a little too aggressive but you, 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 you genuinely are ruining the field of physics, mathematics, and biology, um, any life sciences. And the fact that you'd accept a prize while you're stomping on other person's work is a shame. So, please leave the field, genuinely. Um, now back to mathematics. Um, so, right now today, all of our, our, our mathematics and our computer system is built on binary code. Zeros and ones. Um, and that, that is, well, in addition to that, we have a base 10 number system. And... There's really no good reason to think that a base 10 number system is the correct number system to have. Um, so now we need to ask, just review, like I said, some very basic concepts in mathematics. What is a domain? Um, and I just have some circles up here. The numbers 1, 2, and 3, we have some function f. We plug in 1 to that function f, and we get the result, the output, the range number, b. 2, if we put the number 2 into a function, we get a. 3 we get C. Um, 1, 2, and 3 is the domain of this function. Um, and more generally, a domain is any number of a set that you can put into a function. And the reciprocal of a function is simply a different function that once you put the range numbers in, you get the domain numbers back of the first function you talked about. So if you put in A, you get 2. If you put in B, you get 1. If you put in C, you get three. Um, <coughs> and now there's some general uh, restrictions on all domains for any function you have. Remember, this whole time, this lecture series, you've been saying we have to make mathematics strictly bounded in a physical sense. So, what what restrictions do we have on any function right now today? Well, we can't divide by zero. Why? Hmm. You probably have never received a good answer to that, and we're going to answer it on the next slide but it's because we should not have a base 10 number system. You can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, it's, all, it's all because of the base 10. These are things you can't do. And you can't take the natural log of any negative number. Um, these are really the same thing. This is really a consequence. This should be like a indented under this one. A logarithm is an exponent. But I just wrote that up there for more specificity. And so I just have some examples of some functions f of x equals x squared. You can put any number, any natural number, any... I'm going to make a point... Okay, so we're going to reclassify the number systems. Um, and that's... It, we're, we're going to bound them, not necessarily even restructure them. And this is kind of getting to more the, the logical implications of mathematical structure. This is... I don't want to say no part of mathematics is inaccessible if you explain it correctly, but this is, this is high-level logic if you want to call it high level. But then, so if we have the function f of x equals 1 over x, well, like I said, we can't divide by 0. So 0 is not part of the domain. Um, and then with f of x equals the natural log, remember, if you put in e, you get 1. Um, you can't take the natural log of 0 or ne any negative number. I guess, that, I guess that's, uh, that's what I was thinking up here. You can't, you can't take the natural log of 0. And that's because zero is not a number. You can't measure zero anything. Zero cannot represent something physical by its very definition. Zero represents the concept of nothing. Um, and then so, in mathematics, you'll be introduced to the concept of domain before you'll get introduced to the concept of a basis. Um, basis, you'll typically you'll hear that word in linear algebra, maybe your first year of college. But no one, nowhere in college will they give you, or anywhere, will they give you a good differentiation between what's the difference. And there isn't one. These are just two words that people don't really get yet. Um, 
But the correct definition is a, what is a basis is a finite. Because we're bounding everything, if you, go, if you Google what is a basis, it will say a linear independent spanning set. And that's correct. But I have, I have proven this and we'll be discussing this, but it is a finite linear independent spanning set. Um, so for people who don't know, well, what does that mean? Um, linear independence is simply, well, a, a, a linear combination is when you can write vectors and scalars as a, as a, as a, uh, as a it's not sequence or series, as a series. A sequence does not have an operation. If you wrote just numbers up here, 1, 2, 3, that's a sequence. If you write 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's a series. So a linear combination is when you can write any vector of a vector space as a combination of other vectors and scalars within that space. So a basis is the smallest subspace or subset more generally um, that can map or span or generate the entire range, the entire output space. And so that's, that's right now, and that's, like I said, that's the correct definition. This is how it's taught in school every day right now today. Well, so now we need to ask the question, what is the natural basis of mathematics? Why would it be 10? And it isn't. We're going to make plenty of arguments on this next slide of why it isn't. Um, and the last thing we need to, to cover is what is an ordinal number and what is a cardinal number? An ordinal, ordinal number is it indicates a position in a list or in a series or a sequence. Um, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And a cardinal number is really, cardinality is dimensionality. What is dimensionality? It is a, it's the, the natural number that represents the, the dimension of the set. So what does that mean? Again, you live in three dimensions. The cardinality of real space is literally just the number three. Ln of E equals one, just one. What is the cardinality or dimensionality of the real world? Three. And so, and that brings me to the title of the lecture. Once, twice, thrice. Thrice? Question mark? And that's because thrice actually isn't a word. I remember I showed you that we wrote, we bounded mathematics with just that ordered pair of one and two. Once, twice, thrice. These are the linguistic heuristics, and this is because these numbers are less than three. All measurements have only occurred in three dimensions, and once and twice are stabilized numbers. There is no physical system, there's no isolated physical system that only has uh, two dimensional components. Remember, the basis is the cosmological microwave background, that is energy and momentum, a photon. And so now, now we're going to go over the biological and natural arguments for a base two number system and how it resolves all of these infinities you see in mathematics and quantum field theory and general relativity that don't make sense. And so now we're going to start, before we get into the physical reasons, we're going to do a little bit more math. Um, so we're going to ask a question, what is an operator? Well, an operator is just a, a symbol or a sign that tells you what to do to another number or set. And we have a <coughs> finite amount of them. You can add or subtract, you can divide or multiply, or you can exponent, or you can take an exponent, or a logarithm. Um, and that just tells you what to do to a function. And I want you to ask yourself, why do operations have reciprocals? Why, why can you view subtraction as adding a negative number? And why can you view division as a multiplication by an inverse? Um, and I don't really have great proofing done here, but this, this really gets back to the physical intuition of the arrow of time. Um, think, forget mathematics for a second. Think about yourself. If you're around people, if you're in a friend group and you're around people who only talk about the past and they're only reflecting on all their great memories and, the, and they're talking about how good it used to be, they pretty, they're pretty much suck. Like, those people are boring. Those people aren't fun to be around. Um, anyway, so what does that have to do with math? Well, the era of time, right, the future is distinctly different than the past. Well, these operators, the reciprocals, there's one that 
progresses or builds a physical structure and one that reduces, right? Addition, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 minus 1 equals 1. And so each, each I call those progressive operators and these are regressive operators. Um, but time always moves forward, right? You can't stop the, the flow of time. So the reason I point this out is, is because if you talk to anybody, they actually do these things instinctually. And that's because of the physical reason that time is moving forward. You have these different operators. They represent effectively the same mathematical thing. Uh, they'll get you to the same answer. or uh, You perform the operation the same. But the progressive operators are forward-looking. Um, like I said, I, haven't, I, I personally did do a lot more research in there, um, but I wanted to point that out. And now, getting back to what we said in the first episode, what is, what is the modulo operator? Um, and, or like, why, why, should we have a, why should we have a base 10 system, and why should we have a base 2? Well, the modulo operator really says you take n mod m means you take the number n, you divide it by m, and the remainder of that division is the mod, right? So n mod, or 2 mod 2 is 0, because 2 divided by 2, there is no remainder, you get 1. Um, and so now I'd like to point out n mod 2 for all n is either 0 or 1, and it's an ordered pair. And that's a, that's a logical ordered pair. We'll get to what's called the empirical value function. Um, and this is, if you look up Empirical logic gates right now, this is number 6, 0, and 1, and this basically bounds. You can't, right, if someone says they, they went 110%, no you didn't, you can't, it's literally impossible. So, this dimensionless calculation bounds percentages, right? Very literally, the percentage sign is 0 over 0, the inde indeterminate term, indefinite term, something like that. But the point is that it, what that symbolizes is there's no units. Um, and so I wanted to point that out because these are, this is the whole solution set to n mod 2 for any n. Um, and now we're going to talk about the physical reasons as to, as to why base 2 is, I wouldn't even say better, it, it is the base of mathematics. Um, the zygote divides exactly seven times to form the blastocyst. We're all people. Literally, you started out as a single cell, and that's cell divided. It divides exactly seven times to give you the blastocyst. And how many cells is that? Well, that's 128. So we take our base two. <coughs> well, I guess that might be we start with one, and then you divide and get two. But 128 cells, I think. I didn't check that. I hope that's right. But two to the seventh. Um, and then. The, okay, so I have two to the two to the three equals eight up here. And what I want to point out is, first of all, again, this represents a coordinate system. Two, two, two. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, so getting back to the physical motivation for this, remember, a photon only has two components, and it interacts with mass. Um, you might say, well, that doesn't really mean anything. Well, it does. Um, 2 to the 3 equals 8. And so what this does is if you write this as a sequence, this 2 to the 7, you have our basis, the 1, 2, many, and then you have 8 as our last element in our number system, as opposed to 9. Um, and why, why we'll, we'll, we'll be explicitly talking about the elements of the math set, or of the math structure, excuse me. Um, but additionally, there are seven colors in a rainbow. There are seven days in a week. And there are seven keys of music. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And so, with my previous proofing, and now what we've done with our number system is we've bounded it. We've said we have a base of two. Um, and we have not a, not a maximum, but again, remember we said the basis is the minimum number of things you need to completely describe a space. Um, for it to be a spanning set, it has to cover every element in that, or keep it consistent, every element in that vector space. Um, and so now I want you to ask yourself, when are we going to run out of music? When are we going to run out of new songs? Probably said never. That's what I said, and the answer is never. But why? 
The English alphabet has 26 elements. Most alphabets have between 23 and 28 elements. Um, so, an alphabet is the basis of language. And the basis of language is sound. Right? How many of you were a baby before you were a person that talked? How many of you said dad, dad, mama, ma, papa? How many of you said dad, dad, dad? Nobody. Ma, ma, ma. Nobody. Base two number system. First word as a baby. It's pretty convincing. Um, but I really want to emphasize this. There are seven keys of music because there, that, is, that, is, that is the available, I don't want to say degrees of freedom because there's three degrees of freedom and those are your dimensions. But I'm not exactly sure what this is yet. But you're never going to run out of music because language builds, right? There's this big conundrum right now. How fast is the universe expanding? Um, well, with an expanding universe, you need an expanding, right, to, to map the space of language, you need more words. Um, so, I'm trying to bring a lot of concepts in here right now, but... <coughs> you don't run out of m music or words or novels or conversations because language, the, the alphabet is simply the basis. And in the same way these progressive operators build physical structure, letters and words build the descriptive capacity of mathematics. Um, and so, I said I wanted to show why these take the infinities to, to become quantifiable calculations, but I have to do more math for that. But this is the conceptual reason as to why you need a base two number system. And why, like I said, not, 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 you don't get to pick the right answers in math, you discover them. This is true. There, we, we live in a world where base two is the correct way to model systems. Um, and those are the reasons why.